So welcome everyone. I hope you guys are as excited as I am because I am extremely excited for today's craft, which Stacy will explain later. But to begin, thank you for coming to this Inform Your Community Celebrating Create event. My name is Londi and my pronouns are she and her. So today I'm gonna to just describe myself a little bit. I am wearing a black shirt. I have my hair on a ponytail and my background, I have three windows right behind me. It's a beautiful day. So we have to let the sun in. Um, and also closed captioning is enabled and you can turn it on if you need it. Um, at Inform Your Community, we offer events that combine information with fun. And you can visit us at www.informyourcommunity.org. You can also find our social media links on the bottom of our website. And you can tell your friends to sign up for our mailing list on the top right of our website at www.informyourcommunity.org. And of course, you can donate using your um, our donate link at the top right of the page. Um, so let's talk a little bit about today's topic. Um, indigenous people are an important group because we often hear about them, but don't really know much about this group of people. There are 574 Indian nations, self-governing tribes in the United States whose members speak 175 different languages. Today, we will learn more about this group. And this event is part of our Celebrating Create program where children like yourselves engage in unique craft projects inspired by inclusive monthly celebration themes. For today's craft, drum roll, we will make a dream catcher, uh, which is great. Um, our facilitator today is John and John will help us with any tech issues and also to monitor the chat. Throughout the craft, if you have any questions or comments on the craft or the topic, please feel free to unmute yourself or if you don't feel comfortable speaking, you can also type in the chat and John will be able to see your comments and your questions. And we love to see your work in progress. So please feel free to show your project to your camera as you make it and when it's complete. So Stacy will help us with our craft today. Uh, Stacy, why don't you tell us about the craft and why did you pick this craft? Excellent. I'm happy, so happy to be here. Uh, so uh, my name is Stacy. My pronouns are she and her, and I am wearing a white uh, sweater uh, against a black background, uh, pretty plain. And so, uh, and I have kind of salt and pepper hair. Um, so today's craft is a dream catcher craft. I'm so excited about this craft. Uh, obviously, uh, it's something that we just kind of associate with indigenous peoples. Um, and so we're going to be making that craft today. Uh, we also often see this just as a decoration. Sometimes we, we may even have them in our houses right now. And so it's great to know more about not only um, uh, the cultural, cultural, cultural assumptions about uh, indigenous peoples and dream captures uh, uh, more specifically, um, but also to make one ourselves. So I'm so excited to be here today so that we can learn more about this cultural symbol. Um, and here's what, without further ado, here's what you're going to need for your craft today. So what I recommend, uh, even if you have our kits at home, we mailed our little kits, even if you have our kits at home, uh, you're going to want to have handy a scissor, as well as if you can, a little um, bowl. These two things I really recommend having handy. If you received our kit, what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, in your kit, you're gonna have some beads. Okay, so you can open up your kit and you can take out all the ingredients in your kit. You're going to have this bag of beads. Once you get your bowl, you can put those beads in the bowl. That way they're not flying off your table. So that's why you need the bowl. In addition, in the kit, you're going to have a couple of feathers. In my case, my feathers are two different colors. Yours may or may not be the same color. Um, you're going to have a, a ring of some kind. And I'll talk about more, more about that in a minute. You're going to have a long piece of white string, a very long piece of white string, and two shorter pieces of white string that are like this. Additionally, you're going to have some faux leather cording. Now, it's not real leather, but fake leather cording. And you're going to have this, which is floral tape. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's very thin and kind of stretchy, but don't stretch it yet. Um, but floral tape, a rather long piece of floral tape. So that's if you, if you have our kit. If you don't have our kit, you're going to want to go gather around your home the following. So of course, the scissor and the bowl, 
But in addition, you would want to have a ring of some kind. And I know you're thinking like, well, where am I going to find that? You'd be surprised. Um, here, for example, is a binder, binder ring. That is a very suitable ring that you can use for this craft if one's lying around your home. Um, uh, a large key ring, for example, might work. This is about two inches wide. I wouldn't go much lower than that, much smaller than that. Additionally, and thank you, John, for putting in the chat the different things you're going to uh, need if you don't have our kit. This is a bracelet, a, a bangle bracelet. So if you have a, a bangle bracelet that you don't really like using as a bangle bracelet, it's too big on you, it's too small on you, you can use that as your ring. So see if you have something around your house that is in this type of a, a shape, um, you can grab that. Additionally, uh, you probably don't have leather, fake leather cording. If you do, that's great. Um, and you probably don't have floral tape. These are kind of both specialty items, but you probably have somewhere some ribbon and you can use um, either the, the, the plastic ribbon or fabric ribbon um, that you might use for wrapping a, wrapping a present, okay? Ideally, it would have some width to it. Um, and, and the greater the width, honestly, the less work you have to do and you'll, I'll, you'll see why very soon. So, but about half an inch is probably an ideal, ideal width if you're using some kind of ribbon. You'll also want to have some string from your home, and this could be thread. It doesn't have to be as thick as the cording that I'm using, or it could be thicker than the cording I'm using. So that's fine as well. So you can just bring the spool of that nearby so that you can cut it as you need it. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, in our kit, we also had one other thing. We have this, um, this kind of cording as well, okay? Just so you know, in the kit. But for those of you who don't have the kit, you can just use the same um, string or threading you can use, or cording, you can use that for the hanging part, for the web part, as well as for hanging the um, feathers. So just one will do. And it, if you can in your house, you may have some beads. Um, if you have three beads, that's ideal, but you can certainly have more than that. If you don't have any beads, that's completely fine. You can do the craft without beads. And for the beads, you want them, I would say no bigger than half an inch um, for, this, for this craft. So I think we have uh, all of the materials. Oh, feathers. If you, have the, if you don't have our kit, uh, look around, see if you have some feathers. You may honestly have some picking out of a jacket sometimes or out of a pillow. Pull those out. You have two feathers for yourself. You, um, you can get up to eight feathers uh, to use for the craft. And if you don't have the feathers now, but you think you'll have them in the future, you can hold off on that part. You'll see how we do it. You'll get the video when we send it to you and you can add the feathers, the feathers later. But sometimes people do have craft feathers, uh, especially if they have kids lying around the house. So those are our materials. I wanna get us right started and talking about our ring. I'm actually, this is about a, a four inch. This is a three inch. And then the one that I sent, um, yeah, it's about the same three, three and a half inch. I'm gonna be working on this small one. This is the smallest you'd wanna go. This is two inch. And the ring symbolizes in uh, Native American culture, a few different things. It's the, um, the sun and the moon and kind of their movement across the, the sky. It symbolizes the shape of the earth, which doesn't, not surprisingly. Um, it also symbolizes this idea that life is continuous. There is no beginning and no end. And I know from maybe kind of our Western mindsets, we might think, well, what does that mean? There's no beginning, and no end. But really what it means is that this idea of of heritage, that we belong to something that came before us, um, this idea that's very common in indigenous uh, populations, that there were people who came before us, and things that came before us, and animals that came before us, uh, and then there's us, and then there is a continuity towards the future and future generations, uh, and, and, and that we are kind of caretakers um, in a sense, and we'll talk about that idea later as well, but this continuity between what came before us who we are and what we do, as well as what's going to happen into the future. And so that life is just kind of continuous in that sense. And so the circle includes that kind of continuity over time. Um, so, uh, and, and that we're all kind of caretakers to future generations as well. You may also, by the way, have a wood ring, either as like a, let's see, a napkin holder or as um, a ring that's used for um, sometimes a bathroom shower curtain or your actual curtains. Don't go taking the ones that are off the curtains right now, but if you have one hanging around, you can use one of those too. And if you have material that's wood, 
that's great to use. Um, you don't even then need to wrap it. Um, uh, when, and, uh, yes, so, so we'll talk more about it in a little bit uh, as well. Um, right now though, while we are wrapping it, it's a good time for those of you who don't have our kit to go gather your materials. And for those of you who do have our kit or already have your materials gathered, we can go ahead and, and get started. This process takes a little bit of time. So uh, you have time to gather and then come back and still do this part, okay? So the most important part right now is you're going to take out your ring that you got in the kit and you have to make a choice. You're either going to choose your floral tape or you're going to do, choose your cording and you're doing it different ways depending on what you're using. Really for a deep dream catcher, a more authentic dream catcher, you're going to use this cording. But for, for kids, this cording is really difficult. Okay, so I recommend uh, if you're a little one and you don't have a lot of parent support right now with you to help with this craft that you probably don't use this and instead we're going to have you use this. Okay, but I'm going to just very briefly show you how to do it with the cording. If you have the cording, you can go ahead. So if you have the floral tape, don't do this, but if you have the cording and you want to try to use the cording, I'll show you the quick version of how to do it. So let's see if you can see me, uh, here you go. So you have this, make it into a loop, so fold it in half, so you have a loop, okay? So like conveniently I'm wearing white, so you can see it on, on my shirt there. So you're gonna take that, hold your ring up against, I'm gonna do it on this one, up against this, so you have the loop up, and then pull the bottom, pull the, the, the loose ends of the string around, Stacy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if I could suggest lower it a little bit so your close-up view is a little easier for them to see. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see this close enough? I can. I think that's a little easier than the one oh. above, and but I don't know for everybody else. All right, if anybody has a difficult time seeing this, let me know, and I'll put it up against my shirt if that helps. Okay, but I'll do it down here. Okay, so you're going to put the audio is following, the video is following the audio. Okay. So it's only the uh, front view. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll work on that. In the meantime, hopefully you can see. I see what I see what um, what you're saying. So if you have it on your phone, perhaps you're only seeing this front view. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way for now, John, until we sort out this issue with the, um, I think some folks who have it on their phone or who have it, um, anyway, can only see it this way. So we are going to go ahead and show it to you against my shirt. Okay, I'm going to do the far shot then. There you go. So you can see it against my shirt. And I basically pulled, I had my loop. I'll do it one more time just so we can see. Do it one more time for you. So if you're using the cording, this is the more difficult one. So this is for older kids, okay? You're going to take this loop. You're going to fold it over your, your bangle, okay? And then you're going to pull the loose ends through that loop, okay? And that's how you're going to get it to stay, okay? And that's a nice, a nice knot for you right there. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to start wrapping by just pulling one side through, pulling one side through that, um, that bangle, your ring, and you just keep going. Now, the hard part about doing this, which is why I say it's not great for littler kids, is you really have to hold on to this because if I let go of this part I'm holding on to and I let go of this, this is just gonna kind of unravel a bit, okay? And then you have to tighten it again, you have to hold back to the other side and then you have to keep doing it. You're gonna keep doing it really tight so that you can't see the bangle underneath, okay? So if you're using the cording, that's how that's going to be, okay? and you just keep going. You're going to keep going until you get all the way down to the bottom, okay? And then you're going to tie a little knot, okay? So once it goes all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, and you are here, okay? Then you're going to just tie it into a knot on this side on the bottom, 
So I'm just going to show you. And that's what's going to hold that there. And then on the other side, because you still have this whole other side you need to do, okay, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to wrap it and wrap it and wrap it. If you're using the cording, it's going to take a lot longer because the cording's thinner and wrap it and wrap it. And again, you're keeping it very, you want it tight. You don't want to be able to see that. You see, if it's loose, you're going to see this underneath the bangle. You want to keep it nice and tight. Okay. And then again, you'll get to the bottom and you're going to tie another knot so that at the top, um, you'll have that little loop that you had made, which you can't see the loop anymore. It'd be very hard to see. And at the bottom, you'll have two, two knots from this. So take your time. If you're doing the cording, go ahead and do it that way. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But for younger kids, I'm going to focus on this way of doing it, okay? And for this way, I am gonna go back to this um, because, the, because this material is bigger, I am going to try to show you on both the close-up as well as on, on this on the, the version of me right in front of me that you have right here, uh, as well as this. Some people have asked to only have one spotlight oh. so that on their computer it's bigger. I think okay. either, either one works, but okay. just please focus on one and let me know. All right, no problem, perfect. Then I'll do it this way. Um, so when we, yeah, I'll do it this way. Okay, so for this, here's the trick. This floral tape is fantastic. I'm gonna tell you why. And don't do this, but I'm just going to show you. If you pull it a little bit, it becomes sticky. It's so cool. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your floral tape, one end of it, on. For those of you who are using floral tape, again, don't do both. You're either doing the cording or the floral tape. So you're going to take a piece of the floral tape, but not the piece, the whole thing. Hold it against the, the ring that you have. And you're going to put some pressure on it. Uh, and you're gonna feel it getting sticky. So there's two ways to get the floral tape sticky, either putting pressure on it or pulling it slightly. Once you have it, put a little pressure on that, it'll, it'll stay, which is the nice part about the floral tape instead of the cording. So then you're going to do the same thing that those who are doing the cording are doing, which is you're pulling the, the cord, this tape, the, floor, the floral tape around the ring, okay? As you pull it, that also will activate the, um, the stickiness. And so as you're pulling it, it's going to stick to the ring, which is so cool. Feel free to give a shout out into the chat about how cool that is, because that is super cool. So just keep kind of pulling it. You see how much faster this goes when you're using the floral tape. You pull it through the ring, put, put some pressure on it. Don't pull it too hard, but the beauty of it, I'm going to blow your mind. The beauty of it is even if you push too hard and it breaks, you push the end down and then you won't see the seam. And then you take the piece that broke and you just keep going. Just make sure you're covering up the metal on the ring. Okay. So let us see. So keep doing that. Go ahead. Um, and while, while folks are doing that, and of course, if you have any questions while you're doing it, your goal is to get all the way to the end of your ring. Make sure that you're um, tight. Okay, so it's not loose. You want to make sure it's sticking and just keep going until you get to the end of the ring. While our, our wonderful uh, guests who are doing this craft, our attendees are doing this, John, I'm wondering if you can tell me a few cool things about Indigenous people and what they've done in the United States. I would be happy to. And before I do that, I actually want a, a little personal note. My kids recently were studying about Native Americans and they asked me what's happened to them. They didn't realize that they are still active members of um, our country and that there's over 500 groups still in this country. And that was really surprising to me. They very much still are uh, an important part of this country and they've added to our history you know, in so many different ways. Um, one thing you know, that they did from 1886 to 1930, uh, Native Americans known as the Mohawk uh, Skywalkers helped construct a lot of the big buildings in, across the United States. This is especially impressive when you think about the skyline of New York City and how tall the buildings are. 
Um, one of the buildings, the 77 story Chrysler building was completed in 1930. And at the time was the tallest building in the United States. And the Native Americans were critical in, it, in, its, in its building and its formation. You know, I, I just went by the Chrysler building the other, other day and I had no, I, I no idea that the Mohawk Nation played such a, a, a role in building it. That's super cool, it's a beautiful building. It absolutely is. It's one of my favorites architecturally. Um, but they've done a lot more than that. I mean, we can't get into all the different things. But another thing I think is really cool is there was a group called the Navajo Code Talkers uh, who used the Navajo language to create a secret code during World War II. And during the Battle of Iwo Jima, six members of the Navajo Nation translated 800 messages in 35 days to help the United States win the battle, and then eventually contributed to them winning the war. So their own language was used to help create and, and decipher that code. I think that's pretty amazing. That is, that is something to be very, very grateful for. That is fantastic. Um, well, let's, let me see how, how folks are doing and if we're ready to move on to our next step. I think we probably are. Let's see if anybody has any questions before we move on, because we don't want to go too fast. If anybody so, is needing more time, if you just let us know in the chat. Happy to, to wait another minute. And actually, while, while we're checking to see if anybody needs more time to do that previous step, wanted to, to mention that um, the kind of meeting of the dream catchers and why is it, it's important. So, in Native American traditions, dreams are, are very meaningful. And so having the dream catcher, the idea is that um, the dream catchers will help capture, there's kind of two schools of thought. One, uh, depending on, so depending on kind of which nation uh, you're from, either the dream catcher catches the, the bad dreams uh, and lets the good dreams um, so once we have the finished product with the feathers, so it'll let the good dreams come down to the person sleeping. So you put this over your bed or over a crib and um, the good dreams would come down from the feathers to the person who's sleeping uh, and the bad dreams would get caught in uh, what we're going to make later, which is our web. It's super cool. Uh, another version of it is that the, the um, bad dreams, if you put it by a window, the bad dreams will go out the window and the good dreams will be, will stay inside. So uh, we'll be caught inside and so stay with the, the dreamer. So um, two versions of that, depending on where you wanna put it. I know some folks put it on their walls. We would want to have it near your bed on a wall if you're going to do it to make sure those dreams trickle down off of your your feathers onto the sleeping person. So how are we doing? Does, do people sound like we're ready to, to move on? Um, Stacy, if you don't mind, um, there's a couple of people that, do you mind showing them how you're tying like one side so that way, like, you know, um, it doesn't like, you know, um, how do it come off? <laughs> yeah, so you can show them how you're like going around and tying the knot. Um, Fantastic. So yeah. this, mm -hmm. and, and the cording, right, on this version? There, yes. Okay, great. Yeah, so right now I'm just going around, going around, and at the end, you're literally just going to tie it in a, in a knot, like you would, you know, a, a shoelace perhaps, something like that. And I'll just show you, even though I'm not done, I'll just show you. So you take the, the you make your little hoop here, okay, and you take your, your loose end, bring it over your hoop, your, um, your bangle and then pull it through. Okay, and that's it. And now it's, it'll stay. Okay, even though I didn't finish this side, you can see it's, it's staying pretty well on this, on this side that I finished. So it's basically like tying, tying a knot. Okay, and so you're, then you're gonna do it on the other side. Again, I'm not done with my, with my cording version of this. But if I did it on the other side, then I would have at the end here, I might have two pieces dangling down. And for now, you can just leave those dangling down. If you already cut them, that's fine too. But why not for now, leave those dangling down. Okay, and you can start to see you've covered up all of the, of the gold or whatever color you had underneath. 
and now you've got this beautiful cording uh, material and the, and the 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 feeling of it is 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 nice as well because it's that kind of faux faux leather feel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the to the next part of this. Uh, we've talked about the two different places that you can kind of hang these. Um, we're going to now use string, and and this is the part where it gets uh, more tricky. Okay, because with the string, um, you um, what you call it with the string you're going to have to pull you you're going to you're going to i'm sorry i have a visitor <laughs> for those of you who are cat people you can empathize with me um but you're going to you're going to there you go my visitor left so uh here's my uh yeah my my other guest that didn't register for the event today okay so for your string it's very important what you're going to do and this is this is a tricky part, despite my distraction. First of all, you're just going to to make a knot um, at the end of one part of that string, tie it around, and you're just going to tie um, tie your string. The long you want to do it with your long one. I'm using a short one for demonstration purposes, but you're going to want to tie your your string in a knot. I would do a double knot, tie it just at the end. Basically, you want this not to go anywhere. That is your goal. So you're tying it at the end as tight as you can to the to the ring. Okay, there you go. Okay, so now from here, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to be doing this the entire time. This is the one thing you need to do, and you're just going to keep doing it over and over again. Okay, is um, you're going to take your string. You want to do about for the size that that came with the kit. You want to do it about an inch away from where you started that knot, okay? Um, and you're going to put so the knots here, the knots there. You're going to take the string, the loose end of the string, and you're going to hold it. And you're going to kind of very loosely move it to about uh, an inch away. You're going to put the string, loose end of the string, over your ring. And then pull it through, pull it through um, ab above that other string so that now it's going to stay there. Okay. That is the hardest part of what we're doing. And you're going to do that about 20 times. Okay. Because then you're going to go over here again. So pull it about, about an inch. Put it. Pull that loose end over the ring, okay? Pull it through between where your string is and the ring. And again, you're going to do that, okay? So you're going to keep doing that. If you have the kit that we gave you, you're going to do that eight times, okay? Uh, around. If you do it seven, it's fine. If you do it six, if you do it 20, there are meanings to it, but since it's your first time making a dream catcher, we're going to forgive all that um, and say, it's okay. Do it as best you can. As many, um, they, they call them anchors, as many anchors, uh, I'm sorry, people who do dream makers call them anchors, um, some folks. So you're gonna make, as uh, in theory, eight anchors around your string. I mean, around your ring, okay? And keep doing that until you're back at your, back at your beginning. If you're doing eight, that's going to symbolize the eight legs of a spider. So there's, there is meaning to that. Uh, some people do 13, 13 represents the phases of the moon. Um, seven, uh, there, 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 you can do six, you can do five. There's meanings for all of the different um, amounts of anchors you can have, but really do what you can uh, and do what you can as far as spacing goes. So the more even the spacing, the better. And you have a little room to play with on this first one for spacing. So try to get that as, as even as, as you can on this first round. 
Does anybody have any questions before we move to the second round? We might call it the second level. So this is where we are. Okay, in this case, I got one, two, three, four, five, six anchors onto this one. This is a smaller one, but ideally with the kit, you can get eight. And if you have a different, uh, a different kit, you can get maybe more, not a different kit, a different ring, you can get more or less. Okay, so. You're going to keep doing this. It's the same exact thing, except instead of doing the ring, you're going to use those strings as what you're going to attach it to. But it's the same motion you just did. And I'll show you. So you're taking your loose end of your string, you're putting it over the next um, hoop that you had there, loop that you had. Okay, you're gonna put your string through that and right about at the middle. This is another part where it gets kind of tricky, right at about at the middle. But you remember we did the same thing through the, through the um, ring. Now you're going to pull back towards, um, pull it through that hole that you had just made. Okay, so it's the same action you just did. This is where it gets tricky because you know we're doing the same thing, but it doesn't feel like it's the same thing. It feels like it's different, but it's totally the same thing. And you're going to keep doing that through that middle of the next one. Pull it through. Try to make it a little tight, but not too tight. A little give is not bad. And then you're just going to keep doing that around. Okay. And what's going to happen? So my string that I use for demonstration purposes is a little bit short. So you're going to have this long string you have to pull through every single time you do it. But eventually, and you're going to just keep doing that. This is what it's going to look like because as you're pulling on it, pulling on it, and there's more tension, it's going to pull it towards the center. So you'll get those this nice cool um, where it's not so much of a loose loop, it's kind of pulled more in. So you're going to keep doing that, that same motion you just did um, over and over. You want to leave though in the middle um, about when you get to about a half an inch in the middle, we're going to talk again but I want you to keep doing that motion for a little while. As you keep going, it's gonna be harder and harder to, to do that loop because you have less material to work with. I probably did mine a little bit um, too far in more than I needed to, uh, to make it kind of, I made it harder on myself is what I'm saying. So for you folks, you want to make it a little easier on yourself when you have about a half inch in the middle, about your, the size of your finger. That's when you wanna stop and I will tell you what the next thing to do. But for now, while you folks are working on doing your um, loops around and keep going in and in, of course, if you have any questions, let me know. But um, in the meantime, I'm wondering, um, what, is, what is next that we wanna talk about, John? Well, I just love the way these are coming out, Stacey. And just looking at the chats right now, there's no questions coming in. So it's fact time. You know, this is education and fun. We can't skip the education part. So while everybody's working on their spider, spider webs, I want to talk about maybe some famous Native Americans you've heard of. So one of the first is Sitting Bull. You know, he was a very famous um, warrior and was eventually the chief of the entire Lakota Sioux Nation. Um, another one was Charles Curtis. He was the first vice president of the United States who was a person of color. And this was back in, in 1829, you know, through eight, I'm sorry, not 18. <laughs> sorry, I missed that by a hundred years, 1929, but that's still quite a long time ago. Uh, he served with President Herbert Hoover and was a member of the Kaw Nation. Now, thanks to our um, crafters, we have another fact. It was going to be two, but no, no, we're doing three now. Uh -huh. uh, there are currently five uh, Native Americans serving in Congress, and that is the largest Native American delegation in U.S. history. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, we, want, we would love to have more. Diversity is great, but I'm happy to hear that we have five. Thank you to our, our, our folks who uh, put that in the chat. And um, 
we also we also have a cabinet member named Deb Halland, who um, who is currently serving actually as um, U.S. Secretary uh, of the Interior. So that's fantastic as well. And what that position does is they really um, very in line with some of the things we've been talking about. They look after our natural resources, um, help manage public lands. Uh, so very, in this case, very in line um, with what we're learning today about uh, indigenous populations. Um, yeah, that's that's great. I love the, love the tips in the chat too. That's fantastic. I, I, and there are more. I'm trying to keep up with them. But you know, we're going to shift from politics to art. Um, two famous uh, Native Americans are Maria Tolchief, who is a famous pianist and the, and the, the first major prima ballerina from the Osage Nation, and John Trudell, who is a member of the. Oh, I should. Sorry. I did research how to pronounce this earlier, but my memory eludes me. The Sun Key Dakota Nation. He was a poet, actor, musician, and political activist. And trying to keep up with the um, facts in the chat, a third one is a poet called uh, Joy Harjo, who was the first American, um, who was the first Native American poet laureate. Uh, I'm trying to read this and say it at the same time. I'm not doing that well, but obviously there are many more people who um, have contributed to the wonderful, um, you know, art and, and history in the nation than we can keep up with. But thank you, everyone. Keep sending them. I'm going to try to get them in as I can. So, so that's great. And uh, I think at this point, I'm going to ask, how is everyone doing? If anybody wants to show us how they're how their dream catcher is going. I, I took mine apart and did started doing it again so you can kind of see um, the process over, uh, once you get into those middle areas, it's really hard to, to be able to see what I'm doing anyway. So, um, but feel free to show us what you're working on or if you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the chat or you can uh, unmute yourself and ask. But at this point, I'm thinking folks are probably towards the center um, if anybody needs more time, you can let us know. But otherwise, I think we're ready to move on. John, you can let me know if there's anyone in the chat who thinks it's, uh, you know, we, we should slow down a bit or has any questions. So once you get to the center, and again, I'm just using this one for demonstration purposes. Yours does not look like this. Yours looks more like this, uh, which is beautiful. You can start to see that shape. You're hopefully at this point, you've got about a finger size um, a hole in the middle. And it's important to, to leave that uh, hole in the middle. We do want some of those dreams to come through. Uh, so we're going to put that bead uh, in now uh, before we close up the middle. Okay, it's important to put the bead in before you close up the middle. And that bead, that's our spider. That's our spider in our spider web. You can also feel free um, uh, if you've already completed it, you can't at this point. But as we're going along, there were some other beads. You could put beads throughout. It's kind of a more advanced um, advanced strategy. So I'm going to um, show, I did see somebody asked about showing the wrapping again. I'm not sure if that meant the wrapping around the ring or the wrapping around that. So if you, if you want to clarify, please feel free. Uh, I'll show you this again, though, while I'm here. And then we'll move on to doing that last, that, that last piece of the web, which is adding our spider which is our bead. So and they, specific to the web, Stacy. Perfect. OK, so we're, we're um, it's the same motion throughout the whole process. So if you're at the very start, uh, it's still the same thing. You would just put it around the ring. So basically, you're putting your loose end through and over the, um, the next string that's available. Pull it through. And then you're going to pull it back through the previous string that's available. And you want to try to do that right about in the middle of the string. And then the next one, I'll do one more. So you're pulling it through that top. There you go. And then you're pulling it back through the loop that you had just made. 
as you get towards the middle, that gets really small and really small and really small. So it gets a bit harder to do. So it's a great time for parents to help their kids. But you can leave a, a, a good finger size hole right in the middle of there. Um, so you don't have to get it too small. The one I did, I think I mentioned was a little bit, a little bit too small for my own good. Um, okay, so here's what you're going to do. At this point, yours is in the center. So pretend that mine is in the center here. And you're going to take one of your beads. There's a bunch of different beads. The only thing I'm going to say is you probably have, if you have our kit, you have some beads that are the same. And then you have two bigger beads. So at this point, it's another decision point. Okay. Is do you use, do you want your single big bead or do you want a single small bead in the middle? And the, the only thing I'll say is difference is typically you would want like the, the beads to look parallel when you're working on that end part where we're going to put the feathers. So if you use one of the bigger beads now, then it's, it's not going to be kind of the same when you end up doing your feathers later. Okay. You can use this one. Absolutely. And then what you would do later is use your smaller beads. Okay. So um, you're going to take I'm, I used uh, in this one, just so you see, I used a smaller bead that I had, which was a purple one. Okay, some of you have different, you all have different color, smaller beads. So I'm going to take my purple bead, okay, and the end of my string, and I'm going to put the bead on it. Now, you might find that it's a little difficult to get through. You can push it. The other thing you can do is it's probable, probably the case that your end is a bit frayed. If you just cut the end of your string off, that'll make it a bit more stiff and less frayed. It should be able to go through that bead a bunch easier now, okay? And then you're gonna push it towards the center. Okay, push it towards the center. And then you're going to finish off the inside by doing the same motion we've been doing, put it through, pull it back, pull that string back through that same last hole. Try to do it a bit tight so that spider is nice and comfortable in there. And then you're going to tie that last, um, last string into a knot. To do that, you're going to pull that string through again, just like we did. And you've got a, a loop that's just hanging there. Pull that end string through that last loop. Now, for those of you who know how to make a knot, that's super easy. You don't have to even follow my instructions, just make a knot because you know how to do that. But for those of you who don't know what making a knot looks like very easily, it's you're gonna pull, you're gonna take your extra string, pull it, push it through that next. Um, Can you folks see what I'm doing right now on the main camera? For those of you who, yeah, you should be able to see me on the main camera. Okay, so you're gonna push it through this and then you push your string, your string through that, that uh, pr next hole and then you're going to pull it back through the hole you just made, but tie it as close as you can to the, to the bead. Okay, and that's your knot. There, you're going to want to cut that end off. Okay, now in your cases, this is going to be in the middle. Okay. And yours, hopefully, if not right this minute, but sometime soon, are going to look like that. I'm putting it against my white shirt so you can see the bead. I'm going to put it against the black round so you can see the beautiful webbing. So now that's certainly the hard, the hardest part of this craft was doing was doing that. Um, Can we check in on folks and see if they're ready for the next step? So there mm -hmm. had been one comment that your hands were off camera. Um, I believe you corrected that. But if anybody is still having issues or is not ready to move on, please let us know. Excellent. And I'm going to kind of get started we're really pretty much almost done to tell you the truth it's uh it's a, a very simple craft in a lot of ways but that webbing is very very tricky tricky 
Um, and I see that somebody was saying that they wanted me to show the bead step again. And I'm going to tell you the kind of easier version. Sometimes, you know, when you try to explain something, you make it like more complicated. So I'm going to tell you the, the easier version. I'm, I'm going to use, um, use my cording to demonstrate. So, so and the bigger bead. All right, so it's, it's a few more people still working on it. That is fine. So, so the easy version of the bead is imagine just tying a knot, right? And you're, you're leaving a hoop, okay? And you tie your knot. This is doing the same exact thing, with the, but with the bead on it. And then you're tying it. So that's essentially what you're doing. You're just doing it in the middle of your dream catcher. So it's not as complicated as it sounded for, for once you get to that step. Essentially, you're doing that same loop you've been making, except before, um, before you do the loop, before you do the next loop, you're putting your bead on it. Then you're doing that next loop. And then you're doing one more loop in the same spot and tying it closer. And that's how you get in. And that, that those two last loops are basically just a knot. That's all it is. So I'm gonna show you again, kind of this way, just so you have it. So you're, this is your, the end of the string that you're working on in the center of your dream catcher. You've got your, your end of your string. Okay, the rest of it is attached to the dream catcher and you're putting your bead on it. Then you're going to go through. We have our, our, our next loop that we would, we would be using. Yeah, I'll do it on my white shirt. Or that we would be using, okay? You're gonna go ahead and do the same thing you've been doing, which take your, take your string end, put it over that next string. Tie it a little closer this time though. Usually we'd like to leave it in the middle. This time we're going to tie it close to the bead. And then just to make sure it's a knot, you're gonna do that same thing again. String end over that loop and then tie it in a knot. So then essentially this is what you have in the middle of your dream catcher. Um, Stacy, may, may I suggest, um, you know, for anybody who might wanna see this um, again, maybe once we wrap up the program, if they want to stay an extra minute or two, we can help them individually. Sure, absolutely. We can we can move on. I think you folks get the the bead at the middle. Essentially, you're just making sure that bead is tied on and attached to that next um, that next hoop. Otherwise, you're going to have a bead that's kind of dangling in the wind. Um, and if you think about a spider kind of dangling, it's not the most, it's kind of a precarious situation. So you want to make sure that the bead is attached um, to the next end and then tied. Okay, but we can, with, John's got an excellent point. We'll have you folks do that, that later. At this point, most of you should be here. And you should know too that we'll send our video home. So if you get stuck at anywhere and you're like, that's it, I'm just going to put this aside for now. That is totally fine because we're going to send you the video of this and you can follow along later. So. Now, we really only have two more parts to this, to this craft. And as we're doing this craft, especially with this difficult part that we just handled, it, rem it reminds me a little bit um, about how important it is to ask others for help and to get help, right? So putting in the chat, I so appreciate it because that enables me to help you. And the, uh, the idea of helping each other uh, and especially helping each other be to create something um, is important to indigenous populations. Um, you know, uh, folks seeing things as bigger than themselves. How can we help uh, each other um, with things that are not just about me and not just about you, but about um, things that are big, big, bigger than any individual person. So we should all help each other. Uh, and that's a very important uh, part of uh, indigenous populations and, and um, those cultures. And they have a, there's a big word to explain that called communitarianism. And sometimes when there's complex ideas, you need big words to explain things. So there's this idea of communitarianism, which is the idea that um, there's an importance to family, there's importance to our community, and we have a responsibility um, to help our community and to help our family. And our family has a responsibility to help 
us and our community has a responsibility to help us. And so we're all working together to help each other. And I just think that's such a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing and relates so well to doing crafts because oftentimes we do need help when we help when we do crafts too. I absolutely love the word and the meaning behind it. That's just fantastic. Um, com community is such an important part of everything that we do. You know, one of the things that you know, I was thinking about, especially after my kids didn't know Native Americans were still part of our current population, is where are the Native Americans living? And I've got two stats because, you know, I love my data points. Um, first is where do they have the largest population by percentage? And that's up in Canada, where 20 percent or one in five people are Native American. Um, but a different stat is where do they have the largest numbers? And there's over 800,000 uh, Native Americans living in, in um, Can ah, California. Sorry, my, my, my words get all jumbled at times when I get so excited. But that mm. represents 2% of their population. Right, because California is such a big state. Correct. Yes. Yes. That is that is great. That is fantastic. I hope everybody's doing well on this in terms of finishing finishing this up. Um, and um, when we talk about Native Americans, it's important to realize too that we're not just um, those stats are about the United States, but also it's important to realize that we that when we talk about Native Americans, it's not just Native Americans within the United States, but also Central America, um, South America, and North America as well. Um, and, and, and within the United States, um, that Native Americans really were native. They were here 40,000 years ago. So that's, uh, that's pretty native. Uh, so no wonder we might call them Native Americans. And I, by the way, I think we're up to, uh, we have two last steps here. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead with those. Um, this is where we are going to take our shorter string and I'm going to use this string um, to, well, we'll use this string first, actually. Let's go there. So on one side, so for those of you who have the kit, let's take the twine. We would call this twine. We'll take the twine and we're going to attach it to our end um, that we started with uh, over here. We're, we're going to attach it to that part of the ring. It's still going to be attached to the ring, but just so we don't have a lot of um, things dangling off, we're going to attach it to where our string started. Because right now we have this kind of random little string hanging out. So we might as well use that for multiple purposes. And we're going to um, attach our twine over there because it'll help cover up that kind of random string. We can also cut it a little bit, but you don't want to cut it too short so that then um, the whole thing unravels. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to do this. You may have seen this before earlier. Okay, we're going to cut, we're going to not cut. We're going to take our twine that we had. For those of you who have your own string at home, you're just going to take a piece. This is about a, an eight to 10 inch, you know, eight to 10 inch piece. Um, depending on where you want to hang it, you can do it much smaller. But take a, let's say eight inch uh, piece of string and you're going to fold it in half. Okay, so you have a hoop on top, a loop on top, I should say. And you're going to take that loop and you're going to, to find uh, where that dangling string is left at the end, okay? You're going to take your loop and put it through whatever is the nearest place you can put it through. It doesn't really matter. Do you put it through here? Uh, do you put it, so do you put it through there? Do you put it through here? Put it through there? It doesn't really matter. You're gonna take one that's close to that where this is just so we can hide that. And then, so you have your loop on one side and then you have your ends on the other side. You're going to take those ends and you're going to put them through that loop. Okay. And then you're going to pull that so that the loop now is at the, as close to the ring as possible. Okay. And that gives you, it helps to hide your little random string that you had there a little bit. It's a nice neat connection um, to the ring. And then you're going to take the two pieces, you, you, the two loose ends. Okay and you're going to tie them in a knot. Okay, for those of you here, 
So to, what I mean by that is take your two loose ends. I'm just going to cut them for, for them to be the same size so that I can show you. But in, in your case, it doesn't really matter if the two ends are flush. You're going to take these, this, these two loose ends, make a circle with them. That's how you make your knot. And then push the two loose ends through the middle of that, of that circle. It's a little tricky because there's two loose ends to pull through. And then you're going to um, tighten it. Okay. And that's how you're going to hang your, your dream catch. Okay. I'm also going to now show you how to hang your, your um, feathers. Okay. So on the one hand, you have your hanger. Uh, and on the other hand, end, you're going to hang your feathers. Okay, and I'm gonna use, uh, in my case, I'm gonna use my uh, a piece of twine just so you can see it more clearly. But in your cases, you're going to use that, that string that you have. If you have our kit, you can use those two small strings. So you can just grab one for now. If you don't have our kit, you can go ahead and uh, just cut a piece of string. I'd say about four inches is probably fine to cut a piece of string. Um, and make sure you have your, um, oh, your feathers handy. Okay, so um, by the way, for your uh, hanging part that we just did, there is absolutely nothing wrong if you just want to do it the old-fashioned way and and take your take your loop and just tie a knot at top and you know do it that way to tie this off at the top for your hanger. I think most of us would just do it like that, but you can see it's kind of not as neat as the other way. It moves around a bit. So the other way I did it, just a kind of like a little neater, a little prettier, but basically it's just the way to, to hang it up. So don't stress out too much about that. And Stacy, I should have been paying a closer attention to the clock throughout this. Uh, my apologies to everybody. We are at noon, so we're at the end of the plan time, but I think we just need a couple minutes to finish up. Absolutely. So this will be super quick and then Londi will send us off on our way. So for those of you who did uh, this version, again, mine showing the, the gold because I didn't uh, finish it off. But for so, so those of you who used the cording, you have two pieces of string hanging off. For those of you who did the floral tape, uh, you don't have anything hanging off. So there's two different ways to, to do the, um, uh, you can use your, you can, First of all, uh, at this point you've had, this is knotted, okay? So you can use those two strings that are, two, these two uh, parts of the cording that are dangling, okay? You can go ahead and put your beads, one on each if you like. Uh, you know, on each end, we'll do one at a time. So let's say I just want this one bead on this, and then I want my um, feather. You know, we, there's fancy ways to do this, we're going to do it really simple and we're just going to tie a knot around it okay so it's not going to be the prettiest but it will absolutely serve its purpose i recommend tying the knot a bit by on the feathery part of the feather because it'll give you more grip make sure you tie it really tight okay and then what you can do if you like is you can put the um you can cut the end of the cording and you can put the, the bead, you can even put the bead through it, uh, the feather through the bead. Okay, the end of the feather through the bead. And then you can cut the end of the feather. You don't have to. I actually kind of like it when it's not cut, but you can cut the end of the feather. So this is how it dangles off of your, of your dream catcher. If you have the... Um, you didn't use the cording and instead you used the, um, your, you have the string to use from our kit, then what you're going to be doing is basically, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, um, like I said, I'm gonna use the twine to show you. So you're gonna go the opposite way of where you put the hanging, the hanger apart, and you're going to put, um, you're gonna, sorry. You're going to take the end, put it around your ring, tie a knot close to it. Okay, do a double knot so it stays nice and sturdy. And now you're at the same place you where the folks who had the cording were, okay? 
because now you have this thing dangling off, right? And we're going to do the same thing we just did. In this case, well, I have a blue feather. I'm going to just tie a knot. Try to do it where the feather is because that gives it a little bit more grip. If we're doing this as an adult crafting, we might do a, a fancier knot here, make it look a little prettier, but certainly this will serve our purpose. You're gonna tie it really, really, really tight with that feather in the middle, okay? Oh, I forgot, I'm so sorry. I forgot to put the bead in. So you're gonna put the bead on first, and then you're going to um, go ahead. So you put your bead on first, and you might use the smaller beads, in this case, I'm using the bigger bead again, just because the twine won't, um, won't hold the smaller bead easily. And then, and you could do many beads. You don't have to do uh, just one. You could do many beads. And you're going to, again, hopefully you all can see this. You can tie the knot around the feather. Okay, just a basic knot. You can do it as a double knot. You kind of don't necessarily need to, but you certainly can. And you can pull that bead down over it. You don't have to pull the bead down over it. You can have the bead higher if you want. And then just, if you like, you can cut off the end. Um, I just literally just snapped it off, the end of that feather. But you can have the, um, the bead cover up that end as well, okay? And then that's the end. So, Stacy, someone asked a question. They said if the feathers are painted or are they from a naturally colorful, beautiful bird? <laughs> I'm afraid these are going to be painted feathers. Um, so uh, I would say dyed as opposed to painted, uh, as opposed to painted. Um, so, and then you're going to put the, but that's a very good question. You're going to put um, another one, you're going to hang it off one, and then you're going to repeat that same process we just did and have another one hanging off of this side. And you have your hanger on top. And so with your two feathers, you're set. You can have eight feathers. Um, often dream catchers have eight. Again, these the, the numbers are symbolic. You can look up more information about dream catchers to find out more about that. In this case, I just have the one to expedite things, but you can have another one hanging off, another one, another one. Um, also, if you wanted to do that loop that we had done previously, where you pull it through um, and you end up having two dangly parts, you could do one feather here, some beads and one feather there, and some beads and one feather here. So lots of different options for the feathers, but at this point you get the idea. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat, but now you just have to decide whether you want to hang your beautiful dream catcher in by a window uh, or by your bed. So I hope you hope you enjoyed this. And Londi, and thank you for your patience, Londi. If you can talk us out, that would be great. So just before Londi starts, uh, takes us out, um, I'm going to recommend we take you off focus mode. And if anybody has one that they want to show, I will I will spotlight them for the group. There's also I have not been able to keep up with all the wonderful facts people have put in the chat, but they're available to read about Oscar award winners, um, astronauts, you know, heavy um, participation in our military, and other stats that I, I can't even keep up with. We're getting fantastic ones from the group. Londi, please take us away. Mondi, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you everyone. And thank you, Stacy, for showing us this wonderful craft. Um, I'm sure we all learned a lot today. I sure did. Um, and thank you to our wonderful crafters as well for joining us today. Uh, celebrating indigenous people is not a one and done topic. Instead, because it requires an ongoing conversation, we will send our event video and infographic in a follow-up email for reading and further understanding. And we also encourage you to share our infographic to help educate others about indigenous peoples. Additionally, please consider committing to one action related to indigenous peoples each week. Getting informed by coming to this event is a great way to start. But as we approach Halloween, please be cautious and avoid insensitive costumes. Make sure to buy Native products from respected sources that benefit Native Americans themselves 
and plan a trip to a reservation, a powwow, or Native American museum when you have the chance. Our email will include a brief survey of what you thought of the event. Please take the time to respond. Your feedback is very important. And our upcoming event about celebrating Dia de los Muertos is coming up on Saturday, November 5th from 11 to 12. We will be making our own ofrendas using wood, cardboard, um, cardboard, fabric flowers, and lots of fun materials to honor our loved ones. Uh, register now to get your kit in advance before they run out. To look for and learn about more great Inform Your Community events, not only our Celebrating Create program, but events from our other programs as well, please check out our website at www.informyourcommunity.org. Also, please consider donating. We are a nonprofit and your donation helps to keep our events free and cover the cost of mailing materials, craft supplies, and movie licensing. Thank you for coming and for helping inform your own communities based on what you have learned today. Thank you.